Um, all right. Okay, so like I said, you know, if, if you don't feel comfortable uh, with the recording, you can definitely uh, close your camera and don't wear your uh, pajamas, you know, just think about what you would wear when you are uh, presenting your class. Uh, mute yourself when you do not need to speak. Uh, that will create a lot of echoes, uh, but feel free to unmute yourself if you want to talk and engagement in this class is highly recommended. Actually, this year, the university required us to have a lot of uh, uh, interactions in the class, you know, because we know the difficulty with uh, online uh, class. Uh, so uh, we have this uh, online discussion, we have this, uh, um, you know, uh, weekly quiz type of stuff to keep you engaged in the class. And also feel free to use the chat box, you know, sometimes if I'm talking, I probably will ignore uh, if, if you raise your hand, I probably cannot see that. But if you check the box, you know, usually I can see that a warning window. So I can uh, answer your questions. Uh, uh, and, but be aware of who you are sending a message to. You know, we have seen this a lot. Like somebody sent a message to everybody say, I don't like that lady. So uh, just be careful about that. Double check. Uh, and uh, do your own tech support before you start. Okay, so let's try to do, you know, I don't, I don't know how, I, how I'm, I sound like now. I don't know if the microphone is okay. So if you can uh, hear me clearly, please raise your hand. So, okay, so not a problem. All right, great. All right, so this is the agenda for the day. We'll be overview the course, uh, and I, I will give you a quick overview of the construction industry, like how the industry looks like and the problems we are facing. And uh, I will try to cover the basics of an information system and this course, if you see, we will focus a lot on cyber physical systems and because that is actually a major deal of the industry 4.0. So I will cover some fundamentals of that. And we will, if we have time, we will have some discussion about automation augmentation, you know, which means should we use technology to replace people or should technology uh, serve people or augment people? Okay, a little bit about myself. Uh, since most of you attended my uh, BIM class last year, I guess, you know, this is, you know, sounds very familiar to you, but we do have some new classmates. Uh, so uh, I actually worked in the industry for several years before I returned to the academia. So I was working for a company called Zachary in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Zachary is building a lot of power plants. And as you can see on the screen, you know, this is when I was, uh, uh, oh, oh my God, I was young at that time. So uh, that was, uh, I was working at uh, Sandy Creek uh, power plant. That is actually the nation's largest uh, coal-fired power plant. Uh, this is the domaining, also a gas, another, uh, no, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a gas, that's a gas power plant. And so the unique thing about that project is uh, they were using the largest fine system uh, uh, in the country. Uh, so this is the Bigfoot offshore rig project. Uh, so this is uh, in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, and this is an offshore rig. Uh, so this project actually costed more than $5 billion. If you search the keyword Bigfoot offshore rig, you can see some interesting story. Like they assigned this project to a builder, to a contractor, um, and they shipped this offshore rig uh, to the ocean, but then it started to sink. And they have to basically ship it back to the uh, to the shore and uh, assign this uh, contract to Kivit, uh, a new company. So I was actually uh, uh, doing a summer intern there at that time. And this picture shows that uh, uh, I was in uh, Freeport, uh, Houston, Texas. And basically, I'm the I'm one of the home office guys. And the job side guys usually usually there's a tension between the job side guys and the home office guys. I don't know if you guys have ever worked in construction industry. Uh, so they had this program that forced us to work with the field guys, you know, the craft workers together for about a month. So I was so lucky they picked me. So I basically learned how to do the chainsaw, do the, do the welding, a very interesting uh, experience. And this is actually um, my home office guys, you know, like I was working there, uh, great people. And uh, I actually really enjoyed working in the industry. And this is some more pictures uh, 
about the magnitude of the projects that I have been working on. This is the Bigfoot project. As you can see, if you go closer, it's actually it's huge. It's kind of like it's equivalent to a 12 story building and with all the advanced technologies on board. Uh, so we are talking about they need they build a small scale power plant on the deck. So think about that when you ship this offshore rig to the ocean, they have to power them. They, they have to provide a, a electricity for, for themselves. And also we have all the systems for the uh, um, uh, oil industry. And this one shows the likes of the anchor, you know, cable. We call it a cable, but it's actually not a cable for the entire structure. So when the offshore rig uh, arrived on the location, uh, they basically uh, just uh, merge this, immerse this, this uh, uh, anchors in the, in the water, in the ocean, and they basically just suck out all the air and the negative pressure will push the legs down to the sand. That's how they anchor the offshore rig. Just check the magnitude, just check the size of that. Uh, and this one shows my current research interests. I'm doing a lot of virtual reality research. And this picture was taken in 2013. So I started everything in 2013. I was visiting uh, a, a lab at uh, UT San Antonio, University of Texas San Antonio. And I saw this person playing video games all day and the university was still paying him really good salary. So I asked him, what's your job? And he told me that I'm playing video games every day and somebody's paying me to do that. So I think, oh my God, that's a good, good, good job. I want to do it. So that's how uh, I switched my research interest to virtual reality. So this basically is the suit that uh, you, uh, Hollywood is also using to track your motion. All right. So something about this course, uh, the goal of this course is to explore the emerging technologies for the construction industry, including the hardware and software systems such as building information modeling, uh, RFID, uh, sensors, construction informatics, machine learning, and information strategy planning, uh, and also uh, how to use information strategy uh, planning by owners and the contractors to effectively enhance the management of business and entities and projects in construction. So we will be talking about, let me switch the view well, since I'm recording, so speaker view, yes. Okay, so with that side, this course will not only about technology, this course will also about how to use technology. Um, a lot of our issues with the construction industry is not we don't have good technology, is how to adopt the technology, how to encourage a better acceptance of the technologies. So that involves change management, that involves trust, that also involves how to re-engineer the current uh, business process. So. Uh, this will be a main focus of this course. Learning outcomes, uh, we want to understand, but and we want to understand the principles of modern information systems, such as uh, several physical systems. And also we want to understand uh, the main phases of information processing from sensing to analysis to decision making and uh, all the way to visualize the result. So you will see from the syllables that we uh, I organize the topics actually based on different phases of information processing. And also you should be able to design uh, information strategy planning for a general contractor, including identify the criteria for, for the selection of information technologies, design their configuration, the development of IT implement, implementation plan, and also examine state of the art information management methods and the tools for system integration, and also propose the strategies for information integration uh, at the corporate and project level. All right, so this is the course agenda. Like I said, you know, I try to arrange the topics based on, uh, you know, uh, different phases, but also at the very beginning, I want to cover, or we together want to uh, review what happened in the, in the last 100 years. The, the best way to know what's going on is to know what happened. That basically provides the rationale about a, a lot of things we are seeing today, why it is what it is, right? So basically we want to review, you know, what happened last one, uh, 100 years, the, the artificial intelligence technology, building information modeling, scanning, automation, and all the visualization technologies, how we 
uh, accomplished what we have today. And then we will move to the state of art, you know, the current use of technologies. But I will try to focus on the three phases, you know, how we collect data, how we analyze data, and how we make decisions based on the data we have. So that involves different technologies. And by the end of the semester, we will also brainstorm some of the future technologies, the future use of the technologies. All right, so this is probably the most important thing, uh, course grading. Uh, we will have some individual projects and we will have some team projects. So the first homework is a team project. It's a Facebook timeline. I'm gonna talk about that in details later. Uh, the second one is a smart app demo. So you guys are going to use some easier proof tool called uh, AppSheet to develop a, a easy to use a smartphone app. Uh, and you're gonna demo that in front of a class. Uh, the third homework would be smart building design. It's a proposal, okay? You are not required to design a building, but it's actually propose solutions to make a building smarter. And the building we pick is the wire hall because wire hall is really outdated in terms of functions, right? So uh, how to track the locations of people, for example, uh, the building occupancy, uh, how to adjust temperature uh, more wisely. You know, we see a lot of uh, uh, issues uh, in, front, in our wire hall. So you guys are going to propose some solution for that. Uh, finally, we have a term project, so which means you are going to uh, form a consulting company and uh, propose uh, an information technology plan for uh, a hypothetical general contractor. So for all the uh, team projects, we will have the peer evaluation. So this is a multiplier, zero to one. Uh, I think if you attended my BIM class, you know what's, uh, what it means. So basically, uh, you are receiving as a team, you are receiving the same score, but then you are also evaluating each other based on the performance and the participation. So that will become a multiplier uh, uh, from zero to one. We also have some individual assignments. You know, we have the weekly paper review. So each person will take a leadership on reading one paper each week. And at the beginning of each week course, um, this person will present the main findings of the paper. Uh, so that uh, I, I had prepared a sign up sheet uh, on the UF Canvas. So I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and also we have two ICs. You know, each IC will be two sound words. Uh, so one IC is about the data analytics. You know, like uh, what is the current data analytics methods we are using, and the one IC is about the visualization uh, technologies. You know, something about for example, virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, I hope this wouldn't add a lot of burden to you guys. Um, and you guys know me, I'm, I'm, I'm very flexible. So we will, we will go, we will see as we go, so, uh, you know, if I think, you know, if, if I'm give, giving you too much, I probably would consider to remove some of the assignments later. But for now, that's our plan, okay? And we will have a final exam. Um, that's, a, that's about 25% of your final grade. Uh, fortunately, that's open book exam. Uh, you can use your course notes, you can use Google, but uh, given the time you have, you probably have to be very familiar with the materials to be able to finish the uh, questions uh, on time. But this is open book. Okay, so in order to encourage your uh, engagement and participation, we will also have a 10% bonus point if you participate in all online discussions. Let me show you what that is. So let me just go open this one. Okay, so this is the Canvas system. This will be something we heavily rely on, rely on this semester. Uh, you wanna go to home and basically organize uh, all the materials uh, as a weekly modules like this. And all the important uh, information I included in this module called a star here. So if you go to welcome, read this first. This one basically gives you my phone number, but don't try to call this number. I wouldn't be in my office most of the time. So I probably just at home, but it gives you the office hour and also the Zoom link. Uh, this one also has the course objectives and this uh, timeline of the topics, homework dues and a paper reading dues. So this will be useful to you. 
uh, and uh, university also required us to include the private statement. So uh, you can also check useful information here. Syllabus is here. Uh, so if you open this one, let me open it. So this one also includes most of the useful information uh, such as the topics, the outline, and how the grade will be, uh, will look like. And also talk about each of the homework. So like uh, what do you need to do, give you a lot of details. And the first one will be an interesting one. I'm gonna show you that in a moment. And the second one, you know, also give you the web address that you can use. And also the deadline that we need to do. Usually most of the deliverables will be the, uh, the online presentation. Okay, so this is the student team sign-up sheet. Uh, like I said, we will have a team of two for most of the team assignment. So uh, I basically make six teams here. Uh, just use this link and fill in your name and your email address. And this is how you uh, sign up with your team. Let me just close that for now. So I would encourage you to do that ASAP. All right, so this is the reading sign-up form. Like I mentioned, starting from the second week, which is next week, uh, we will have somebody to read the paper and tell us what this paper is about and the license learning this paper. So basically want to put your name here and also the link of the paper. Or oh, somebody's trying to sign up now. Good strategy, week 11, all right. And also this link includes more uh, like a UF resources and the policies. Okay, so starting from week one, it's actually this week. If you open this link, uh, you'll be also see some useful information such as uh, learning objectives of this week one, and also the student learning objectives for week one. Uh, and uh, I posted before each class, I already posted uh, the lecture notes here. So if you prefer to use uh, your like a OneNote app, or if you want to print it out and take some note, you're more than welcome to uh, print it or download it before the class. So I will basically post this one before class, at least one day before class. And uh, once I have the, the uh, lecture recording, I will also post the link here. I will basically upload them to YouTube and post the link here to make everything easier, okay? Uh, readings assigned by instructor. Okay, guys, here's, here's the story. We will have the reading assignment that's, that's compulsory. So that will go into your grade. But this one, the reading assignment is only optional. Um, this is a story. We are required, because we are doing online teaching, so we're required to give you something to read, to keep you engaged. So I try to find something relevant to, the, to this week's topic. Um, and uh, so if you go in there, you can basically see, I basically downloaded, you know, like uh, some useful information, not, not necessarily, uh, not necessarily the, the papers, journal papers, but like this one, for example, it's actually a National Science Foundation solicitation. It shows that how NSF is seen in the separate physical system. Um, so that's also some useful reading material, but also I have some, uh, for the first week, I also provided a review paper on cyber physical system, like what it is and uh, why this is useful, why this becomes popular. So like I said, this reading, once again, guys, this reading is only optional. So you wouldn't go to your grade, but I recommend you to do the reading, okay? And uh, also assignment, uh, you can also check for each week, I also put the assignment requirements and the due date here. So for example, the first assignment, I open this one uh, and you basically, it tells you what you need to do and also tells you the due date would be September 16th. So that's about two weeks from now. Uh, we will have the week one discussion. So this is the online discussion I talk about. This will be the 10 person bonus point. But in order to receive the 10 person, you have to, uh, you have to, uh, engage in all the discussion, okay? Uh, so you probably can just drop a line or two to show that you engaged. So the first big topic is uh, how will the future construction look like? 
how will automation technologies uh, will change the industry. The quiz, this is more about attendance, okay? Uh, so this is also, you can consider this is also part of the engagement requirement. So I already did that. Uh, you can basically go there and answer some fairly simple questions. Okay, so like what does CPI stand for? And uh, you just need to submit this one by before the end of this week. So which is, uh, let's say, Friday this week. Okay, so anyway, the Canvas system will be very useful for you. And if you are confused, what do you need to do for this week? the materials for this week, uh, the homework for this week, you can all, often, you can always go to the weekly module, all right? And find the useful information there, including the discussion and everything. Okay, so far so good. Any question, any comments so far? Anybody? It's really quiet. All right. Now let's go back to the lecture and let's talk about more details about the uh, uh, assignment. Okay, the, the first assignment is called a Facebook timeline, a century of technology. So this is a story. Uh, do you guys know the ENR magazine, engineering news record? No? Yes. 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 So this is, a, yeah, this is the fortune journal for the, the civil engineering industry. It basically publishes the top 400 general contractor top 400 engineering co uh, uh, companies every year. So this is a very popular journal. They actually reported my story several years ago. You know, like I worked with a, a bunch of my graduate students from the same class, from this class, Construction Information Technology. So we actually created a, a fake, uh, here, we created a fake Facebook account called uh, ITCom. All right, so you guys see the screen. And we basically just assume this guy was born in 1905. And we basically marked all the milestones of technologies like uh, construction technologies as the Facebook timeline. You guys will understand the concept here? So it's kind of like you document your life moment uh, using your Facebook. Now we are document this uh, con uh, IT con, the, the life moment also in the form of this Facebook timeline. And you can see a lot of interesting story. For example, this one, this is the first drone, the first unmanned uh, aero vehicle. It's actually happening in 1922. So we basically add use of information, some, some, some fun uh, facts, and also uh, the source of the information here. And you see people try to share the story. So very interesting. Um, let me see some interesting story we found here. Oh, this is the first FID use. Uh, this is the original FID was actually a spy tool. So in 1945, uh, you know, Russian basically, they invented this tool and put it uh, inside the wall of the US embassy. And this is a self power device. They documented the conversation inside the US embassy for like 10 years. Uh, before uh, they discovered that. So very interesting story, but that's actually the beginning of RFID technology, 1945. Let me see, this is the first computer, 1946. And also some interesting video, you know, we also found some interesting video. And we shared it here. And I want to share you the last thing, which is my research interest is the first VR goggle is the first modern VR goggle. Actually, it happened in 1968, about 50 something years ago, 52 years ago. And also this one is an interesting video that how it looks like. And this is a floating cube that uh, people were viewing that. All right, so your first homework would be go there log into this account, work as a team of two, and just go over, you know, this timeline. And if you see, hey, I believe, you know, in 2001, there's also something interesting about technology, but we missed here. Let me add another event here. So you basically can go there and add another event. And then on September 16, you're gonna open this Facebook timeline 
and just go to 2001 and talk about a story you discovered. Make sense? So we are just basically, basically making this uh, Facebook timeline more and more interesting. And of course you say, I don't care about history. You know, since uh, I saw the latest story in this um, Facebook timeline is last year, 2019, but a lot of things happened between then and now. I want to add something new, like a 2020. Yes, you're more than welcome to do that as uh, too. But try to add at least the three stories and try to present that to the class on September 16th. That's basically your first team assignment. No writing, but just uh, uh, doing this uh, Facebook timeline. Let me see, when we started doing that, I think I take some good pictures like this one. You know, this is how we, you know, uh, prepared, prepared this uh, Facebook timeline. And this is how uh, we worked it together. You know, I wish we could have this face-to-face uh, -face class. That would be very interesting. Actually, that's what happened. We, we basically put this agenda paper on the wall and mark the year. And the students uh, started to do their Google search and just, just post it on the wall. And so we tried to clear our minds, uh, did a lot of interesting things. And this is how the discussions will look like. Saved a lot of my teaching time. So I was just basically doing the mentoring work at that time. Okay, any question about this homework, guys? Oh, by the way, this is the password. So basically just go to the ITCon account. Um, username is uh, my email address, dujng dujing82 at gmail.com. Password is this one, you know, this is a capital CGN and this is all lowercase. So any question about the first homework guys? Form a team of two, go log into the Facebook account. Don't change the password. Don't remove others' Facebook timeline events and just add yours and present that on September 16th. Everybody's good? All right. So let me go back to the PowerPoint. All right, so this is the first homework and also it will be uh, peer evaluated based on the contents, you know, like if you include the articles, the videos, interesting images, that's 30% relevance and uh, connection to the trend of selected technology. So for example, if you pick something related to building information modeling, uh, this technology milestone should be relevant to BIM. If you selected something about robotics, you know, that also should be relevant to the robotics. And also ability to engage class in discussion, you know, like when you present this one, uh, how you engage others to discuss, agree or not agree, you know, with, with your selected technology. So homework two, smart app development demo. Uh, once again, this is a homework, uh, this is a team uh, assignment. So you can use this uh, ED proof development platform called the app sheet. And by the way, guys, uh, have you prepare a tutorial for you guys how to use that. And I also have you go over uh, how I can create a very simple app using this app sheet. Uh, it's actually based on uh, Google Doc. So basically save everything in the Google Doc and you'll make the UI uh, on a web browser by dragging things around. And then it, it will send you a link to the phone. It's a text message. When you open that, it appears uh, like an like a app. But it's not an app, it's actually, a, again, a web browser. But it, it looks like a, a, a smartphone app and it behaves like a smartphone app. And so, uh, for example, last year, students were using that to do the GPS tracking of the equipment, using this one to do the face recognition, the barcode scanning, uh, very interesting apps. So, um, and then you want to demonstrate the app uh, to the class on October the 7th. Um, this one will be peer evaluated, which means uh, I will basically send a survey link to everybody and we will evaluate each other based on the purpose, how relevant it is to a realistic construction management problem, uh, the development. So did the development follow the software development process like you identify the needs and for, formulate the user requirements, the architecture of your uh, program, the development and how you tested that. 
functionality. So when you demo that, we will see is your app working? That's probably uh, that's the functionality uh, and how that will meet the requirements and the usability, how easy it is to use the app. Uh, and also you need to write a simple user, user manual. So uh, next week, I'm going to show you the manual developed by the students last year, very simple, just two or three pages, showing some screenshots and how you should use the app. Homework three is the smart building design proposal. So you want to propose a cost-effective renovation plan for well hall to make it smarter. Consider the following functions, you know, like a indoor air quality monitoring, the indoor localization function, occupancy status. So for example, if you want to know uh, if Dr. Du is in his office or not, and how we can uh, add some sensors to the building and push the status to the phone of the students. Uh, energy monitoring and optimization, and also the emergency management system of the building. I'm just giving you some examples but you can definitely think about your own, uh, you know, functions you want to add to Well Hall and just prepare a presentation file, a PowerPoint. And once again, you print it, present that to the class on October 21st. Uh, so it will be peer evaluated again based on the purpose, functionality, and then this one, we also want to consider the economy. You want to come up with the cost to renovate Well Hall building based on our technology. And we want to see if your technology is too much, okay, if your technology is too expensive. So homework four, this is the uh, informatics in civil engineering. So you want to write an essay about informatics applications or data analytics applications in civil engineering construction based on the current literature or your proposed methods. So examples could include structural monitoring and inspection, construction productivity monitoring, construction safety, supply chain, human factors, for example, like safety, smart buildings, urban informatics and smart cities. So basically what, what I'm saying is write a paper, write an essay of 2,000 words and describe in terms of smart buildings, what technologies are available today and what are the successful uh, use case of that. Uh, submission deadlines, November the 18th and so it will be evaluated based on the relevancy, the technical writing. I'm gonna check if you can write a, a technical paper and also creativity. So if you are presenting something new, so that will be basically a big benefit. So uh, the second I see will, would be the visualization technology sensor engineering, something like a VR, virtual reality and augmented reality. But once again, based on the current literature uh, and or your Proposed methods, two thousand words again. Submission deadline is December the ninth. So the assets will be pushed really to the late of this uh, of this course, the November, mid November, and the beginning of December. And like I said, we will we will see as we go. You know, if I think you guys are having too much, I might consider removing them and you know using some other thing to replace that. Right, like an online discussion, individual assignment, paper reading. Okay, so. Uh, our first paper reading will be next week, uh, September 9th. And the first topic will be something about a CPS, cyber physical system. So you want to find a paper in the selected area and give a 15 minute presentation to the class to talk about the state of the art and the applications of this technology in civil engineering, the problem identified by the authors. Like for example, we talk about a CPS, Maybe the problem that, I, uh, that also is trying to address is uh, cyber security, the data privacy issues. So you talk about that and what is new uh, in this paper. You know, that's the, the most important part. I believe this paper is interesting because it proposes a, a, a new machine learning algorithm that can help uh, identify the machine's uh, behavior, something like that. And also the challenge and the opportunities you think you'll learn from the paper. Once again, this must be the journal paper, scholarly paper. So last year we did have some students trying to find some magazine or some, some internet uh, articles. No, we are, we are graduate students. So we want to focus on the scholarly papers. So this one will be um, uh, the, the journal papers. Term projects. Um, so 
you basically pick a technology focus area from the following scanning technology, LIDAR or photogrammetry, sensing technology, indoor localization technology, VR, AR, machine learning, human robot collaboration, and the human factors in construction engineering, uh, construction projects. And you, you, uh, you uh, do some research and write a technical report to describe the background, the problem, your objectives, and you design the study and how you, what you found from your study, okay? So for example, last year, a, a group of students picked this indoor localization. I loaned my uh, Bluetooth device to them. So I do have a fancy uh, indoor localization device with some uh, light horses and also light horses and some trackers that can basically identify the X, Y, Z of a person. So that a group of people, uh, a group of students, they went to the, what's that center? Uh, the center next to the stadium, the, the basketball stadium. Anyway, so they went there, they deployed. Even all, gone, yes, they deployed all the, all the sensors and they presented how the system was able to, to track their location. That's it. I'm not, I'm not talking about fancy experiments that have to go over the ARB review, you have to recruit people. No, it's more of I demo the use of some technology and I discuss how, the, how this technology could benefit uh, the construction industry. So that's, that's what I mean by research project. I would recommend you guys to start early, but maybe it's too early to start now. So I guess maybe we still have a chance to, uh, to talk more in detail, maybe the end of September. So I will show you some of the works done by the previous team so you have a better sense. But keep in mind, uh, this will be a final uh, term project. Uh, using a technology, show how you use that and discuss you know, how this could benefit uh, the construction industry. So your final presentation will be on December the 9th. Uh, we're talking about 30 to 40 minutes. So let's say 30 minute presentation and 10 minute Q and A session. If you need equipment, I do have some equipment I can loan you. Uh, just remember to return them. Um, so I have the equipment for VR, AR. I have a LiDAR scanner. Uh, I have the sensing technology. I have the sensors. So let me see. I think uh, last year, most of you guys actually saw this, right? The LiDAR scanner. So uh, if you want to do some scanning, you can loan this from me. But keep in mind, this is expensive, all right? Uh, I also have some depth camera for you to do it. AR, VR. Uh, I have this uh, whole lens, Microsoft whole lens. That's the AR goggle. Uh, I also have a, a lot of VR goggles, all right? Um, machine, uh, human robot collaboration, that's interesting, guys. Actually, uh, I purchased a robot dog. Uh, it, it's supposed to arrive this month, but it got delayed because of COVID-19. Let me show you that. I'm actually so excited. I hope some, some of you can actually do some experiments with that. So it's called uh, uh, AI robot, not AI, A1. This is a robot I- Sensing camera, $1,000. Now it's true. Most of us don't really have an extra 10 Gs lying around for a robotic dog. But given the market for them, you may remember Unitree's last four-legged robot, the Leica Go. So let me fast forward. Pounds, yeah, this is the. has a top speed of 3.3 meters per second. And it can carry about 11 pounds. It looks pretty nimble. Let's see that again. Like any good dog, A1 can follow its owner around. It uses two depth sensing cameras to perceive its environment. Okay, guys, once again, this is expensive. But let's work together. Let's see if we can do some interesting project, you know, if we can receive it on time. I also ask, ask them to customize this robot. So basically this robot is carrying a very expensive 3D LiDAR. And so the LiDAR will basically guide the, the local motion of the, of the robot. You know, basically the robot can scan the environment and know where it should go. And also can build a 3D model of the building in real time. So I'm thinking about some interesting projects with that. 
I don't know. Uh, let's see how it goes. But I'm expecting to receive this this month. You know, maybe by the end of this month. All right. So that will be the final project. Final exam. Uh, I still need to confirm the time, but I know it will be on December the 16th. Uh, it will be about three hour long, uh, but I don't think you will use all the three hours. So anyway, three hour long exam is open book. Uh, so you can basically check all the course notes, your personal notes. You can Google, I don't care. Um, but keep in mind, you have to submit. So this will be uh, using the Google Doc. Uh, so just, just remember, you have to click the submit button before the deadline. Otherwise, if it, be, if it will gray out, you cannot submit. So the only requirement will be time. What do you do? I don't, I don't, I don't care. But don't work as team. So this will be individual, okay? Don't just make a phone call to your friends, okay? All right. So this is pretty much uh, all the homeworks and assignments of this course. Uh, a lot of them are hands-on projects. Uh, the only thing is the final exam. And then we do have some writing to do, you know, the two essays, uh, but it shouldn't be a big problem, two thousand each, all right? Okay, so any questions so far about the grading, about the assignments? All right, so let's move to the topic today and uh, uh, we will take a break in about, let's say, in about 20 minutes, okay? Okay, I think in order to understand all the, all the problems and all the needs for technology for our industry, we have to, uh, you know, understand the nature of construction industry. So this is how it looks like. It's actually the largest industry in the US in terms of the uh, volume, okay? So it's about a $1.2 trillion dollar or nine percent of the national economy. So we are actually working in the largest industry. So in 2008, unfortunately, I, I couldn't find a, a, a newer number, but this number is, I think is very stable. So in 2008, there were more than 770,000 construction companies in the US, but of which 91% only had 20 workers on the ice. Uh, only one person had 100 workers or more the average number of employees was only nine people per firm. What does that mean, guys? That means we have a whole lot of a small construction companies. So if you are talking about the purchasing technologies, we know technologies are expensive. So that's the issues we are facing today in the US. And once again, guys, this is unique to the US. It doesn't mean that in other countries, the problem is the same. For example, in China, they tend to have the nation owned construction companies. So you're talking about maybe five or six major construction companies that is taking control over the entire market. So for them adopting technologies actually is not that difficult. That's why we see the innovation, especially in the construction industry actually started to move to China because they do have the resource to do it, but it kind of difficult to, to uh, penetrate in the U S so, um, let me see, Dan Yun, Jun Yi, Jun Yi Duan. So do you, do you agree that in China, we tend to have like a bigger construction companies? Yes, uh, like uh, I had an internship in a company uh, last summer. Yeah, um, there are so many, many workers there. Um, and a lot of uh, construction companies are na nation owned, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so they do have a resource to come up with like a new technologies or new applications. Yeah, the, every, every year they hire a lot of new graduate students. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. So uh, the sectors, you know, this is also something that we should recognize before we talk about technology because each uh, uh, specific sector for construction uh, represent different needs for technology. So in general, we have a commercial industry, a commercial market, residential construction, industrial construction, heavy civil construction, and environmental construction. Now a question for everybody, which market sector is the largest in the US? You can unmute, unmute yourself and tell us your answer. Residential. Residential, what else? Industrial. Industrial. So we're at commercial, right? 
Maybe if uh, the largest uh, in term of uh, money, I think maybe he is even. Yeah, so in terms of money. So you said it's a residential, right? Visible. Okay. Heavy civil. All right. So this is the answer. So we have about similar size for commercial and residential. That basically echoes our impression, right? So what do we see is the new office buildings, new schools, and also the new homes, right? That's about each about one third of the total market size. But we do have heavy civil, and industrial, and also a small amount of uh, environmental. So residential projects, they are the housing projects, you know, including individual homes, apartments, condos, townhomes, and prefabricated units. Uh, that's about where people live. So guys, uh, what is the difference between a townhome and a single family home? Anybody? Nobody? What's the difference between townhome and a single family home? Townhome, they have the shared. Go ahead, somebody say. Maybe a townhome, maybe it's like a two story building, and the family house, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a bigger house, maybe. Townhomes actually have shared, shared walls between different units. Uh, and, and a single family home, they have. They don't have shared walls. That's how we define that. So you can imagine the single family home is actually with front yard, backyard, but you and your neighbors are not connected. But townhome is kind of like six, seven single family homes connected each other. So we do have the shared, shared walls, okay? And why we are, we are doing that? This is about property law, guys. You know, if you are sharing a wall with your neighbor, it's, it's a very interesting law question, you know, like when you have some liability, who should, it be, should be responsible for that? I actually have a investment property in Texas now. And the last month, uh, a water supply line just broke. And basically the water spread to my neighbor. And we are still having a very interesting conversation that who should be responsible for that because the water line is in the middle of the wall. Okay, so that's actually why townhome and a single family home can be, can be very different. So the owners will be the private individuals or developers. We know that if, if after you graduate, you guys are going to buy a home, you will be the owner, right? Developers, like, you know, people are building things and sell them, right? So those people who are building them would be the owners. The builders are customer builders, small volume builders and production builders, depending on the size. So the production builders, they build something called the truck builders. They build maybe 100 units altogether, right? The customer builders, they basically design the building and build it for you. Small volume, you build one or two, you can be a builder of a residential home. Means and masters, two guys with a pickup truck, a cell phone and a dog can start a residential construction company, okay? That is very common. Materials used for, for residential projects, we know in the US, mainly wood frame or light frame. So maybe we use wood a lot in, in the US, correct? So let me see, Mr. Duan, can you tell us what is the main uh, material in China? Yeah, we, the most, uh, we often use a concrete, a reinforced concrete. Yes. Yeah, we, 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 most of us are living in apartments and rather than, and in US, I think, and the US, um, we, we, we start and in US, most people live in individual houses. So then here's the, here's the interesting story for two guys. So for, for the guys who are, who are local, like, like a John, for example, when we see the luxurious homes here, what do we see the outside? They basically build the wood outside. John, are you there? You're muted. Yeah, sorry about So for the, for, the expensive, yeah, for the expensive homes here, you know, outside we use what? Outside the home. Yeah, outside the home. We, we, I mean, we use a uh, uh, bricks, right? We use the vine veneers, the stone veneer. Mm -hmm. to pretend uh, yeah. It's a stone home, right? All right. So Jin Yu, Jin Yu, can you tell us what are the expensive homes look in China? Yeah, I'm pardon. What are the expensive homes look look like in China? Uh, the most expensive home in China, yeah, is the 
individual house. Yes, individual uh, the villa. Yes, and some of them use wood, right? So I think this is a this is actually a very interesting psychology, you know, because the common homes in the U.S. are wooden homes. So in order to show my home is different, we put stone outside. But in China, since most of the homes are built with uh, concrete, so in order to show I'm different, they put wood outside. So this is actually how we show different, right? So in order to be successful in this, uh, in this uh, market sector, you must be a people person. So basically uh, be able to know how to maintain a good customer relationship, how to deal with varied owners on a regular basis. The duration would be three months to one year. The size can vary. We have really small, like 100, sorry, one, uh, 1,200 square foot. But we also have some luxury homes look like an office building, right? Commercial, you know, it basically includes uh, office buildings, banks, schools, hotels, shopping malls, religious facilities like a church, stadiums, theaters, amusement parks, court halls, and all the public government buildings where people gather. So next time when you see, hey, we are a commercial builder, that could also be very different. They could be building the office buildings or they could be building schools, okay? Owners are companies, agencies, government, uh, builders, you know, this is how we define them. If your annual value, volume is lower than $10 million, we call them small contractors. And if it's a more than $250 million, we call them large contractors. And in the middle, we call them medium contractor. You would think the number is huge, but I'm gonna show you no, because the construction industry only has very minimum profit margin. So if a company claim that they have an annual revenue of $10 million, don't give them the surprising face and say, wow. So if you are trying to find a job, guys, that they say, hey, we are, we are a great company. Our last year revenue is $20 million. You know you cannot go there because they are very small contractor. We are talking about the profit only about 1% to 3%. You know how much cash they have to maintain the business. Okay, this is the reality of the construction industry. The means and the methods, you know, we use a lot of concrete and formworks. Materials, steel, concrete, glass. Why glass? Curtain walls, right? All the modern office buildings, they basically have the entire face as a glass. That's actually the curtain walls that requires unique technology to build. So uh, to, be, to be successful as a manager in this area, you have to uh, focus on, you know, construction construction operations and technologies, you, you should be able to know a lot of the technologies. You have to be able to meet the budget and the schedule because you are dealing with the big companies and they are very careful about the budget and schedule. And the duration can be from one year to three years. In order to succeed in this area, guys, I know a lot of you are trying to find a job. You have to find your niche. I have seen a lot of uh, commercial builders they focus entirely on schools. They are building high schools or they are building, like say they, they are contracting with uh, UF. Some of them focus totally on, let's say church. Some of them focus totally on, let's say uh, data centers. So because the way you build different commercial facilities are very different, you have to find your niche, okay? Heavy civil, so that's the, what do we call horizontal construction, which include roads, bridge, tunnels, dams, airports, and railways, how people move. The owners are public agencies like governments, right? And so the builders, we call them civil construction companies, engineering firms, or PPP. What is PPP? Can anybody tell me what is PPP? Private uh, public... Uh... Partnership, I think. Yes. Somebody else also said that, right? It's a public-private partnership. What do I mean? It means the government doesn't have any money and they partner with a company who has cash and they build this thing together and the government will let go the facility for a while, for example, highway. So the, the company who actually spend the money can charge the highway for, let's say, 20 years or 30 years to uh, to uh, get back the investment and then return the facility uh, to the government agency. 
So that's called the PPP. Uh, it's a really good way. It's a win-win solution for the expensive infrastructure projects. Means and method, earth moving, evacuation, scrubbing equipment, uh, primary material, asphalt, gravel, steel, dirt. You have to be able to deal with dirt. Uh, as, a, as a guy in this industry, you have to be able, you have to like, you know, uh, temporary relocation. Why? You are building a highway, so which means every year you have to move as the highway is building, right? You are building a, a railway, you have to move as the railway, right? And you have to love the big machines. Uh, the market is very stable. The market demand is very stable. And that's a very interesting market, guys. When the economy goes up, what the government will do? They will invest a lot of money in infrastructure projects, right? Because economy is going up, we do need to build more roads, we need to build more bridge. Okay, interesting story. When the, when the economy is going down, what the government is doing? They invest more in the infrastructure projects because they believe this is a way to open new job opens to, to boost the economy again. So no matter how the economy goes, going up or going down, you can always find a good opportunity in this area. So that's the interesting thing about the heavy civil. But it's very difficult to enter into this market sector because you do have a lot of cash to start a product. And uh, talking about uh, uh, duration, you know, it's about one to three years for most of the heavy civil projects. Industrial, you know, that's the production facilities such as power plants, manufacturing plants, uh, refineries, uh, pipelines, steel mills, chemical pro uh, processing plants, where things are produced. The companies are the energy companies, oil and gas company, and the manufacturers. Builders, we call them EPC companies. What is EPC, guys? Can anybody tell me what EPC means? EPC means engineering, procurement, construction. So that company is more kind of like a design builder. They design the thing, the facility, um, they engineer everything, they also procure the major components like uh, generators from Japan, uh, turbines from Germany, uh, and they ship them here to the US and they also build the thing. So they have the three functions all together. E as engineering design, P as procurement and C as construction. So it's a unique name for industrial builders called EPC company. Means and masters, we don't call them construction, we call them installation because you're buying things everywhere and basically kind of playing Lego game and just stack them together, install them. That's actually industrial projects. And very interesting, we can only buy the things, if you're building power plants, you can only buy the things from three countries, Japan, Germany, and South Korea. So if you're buying, let's say, the turbines and the generators, only Japan and Germany can produce them. You know, like uh, we are talking about uh, um, Mitsubishi, uh, and also we are talking about what is the uh, what is the name? Uh, sorry, I forgot the name in Germany. And uh, there's also some other component: the Hersic heat regeneration steam turbine. That thing can only be built in South Korea. So the EPC companies they have to ship everything from the uh, countries overseas. The ship itself can take two months. So two months on the water, and uh, to pack them, that's one, uh, that's one week. To unpack them, that's another week. So you can think about all the uncertainties related to the industrial projects. I have some interesting story to share with you guys later. Materials, you know, like I mentioned, a lot of pipe feeding, steel, concrete, but the concrete is not that significant. I have to say the pipes uh, uh, is about a 40% of uh, industrial projects. Uh, as a guy working in this, uh, in this uh, industry, you have to be able to relocate. Uh, re, uh, relocate. Uh, and there's an uh, interesting story, you know, like uh, I had uh, this uh, previous uh, colleague, Kevin, and uh, Kevin was uh, uh, assigned to work in a power plant project in uh, Boulder, Texas, okay? Um, 
So they had this conference call. Those guys are, are, are telling Kevin, say, hey, there's a beautiful lady behind each tree uh, in this place, welcome. So when Kevin arrived there and he found there's no tree there. So it's a remote area. That's why there's, there's no beautiful lady as, as either. So most industrial projects, you have to work in the remote and isolated areas because nobody's building a power plant in downtown Miami, right? They always build, build the, all the power plants in some remote areas. Even though you find an apartment there, sometimes you still have to drive 40 minutes to go to your job site. That's actually, if you decide to work in the uh, uh, industrial area, that's how it looks like. Uh, you have to be able to work with engineers. I'm talking about the mechanical engineers, chemical engineers. Uh, and also there are some international opportunities. The projects about three to 10 years. Uh, so I met this lady uh, at the Sandy Creek project. Uh, that was her first job after she graduated with a bachelor degree, Sandy Creek project. And uh, during the, the period she got married and she had a baby. So when we met her, her baby was like a four year old already. So think about, you know, if you decide to work for the industry projects, your entire career could be just three, four projects. Okay. So because one project could eat up about 10 years of your life, but they pay you really good and they have really good per diem. You know, like uh, I know this guy, uh, he's on per diem. You know, they have some people are on payroll, somebody on, on already pay plus per diem. The per diem itself is about three thousand dollar a month, so that's actually a really good. Uh, uh, I think it's a really good job, but you have to dedicate a lot, you know, uh, your life in this project. Environmental, you know, projects that improve environment, maintain public health, and contribute to community's quality of life, such as water, uh, sewers, and waste management. Something about the environment. Owners would be government and public agencies. Builders are very similar to heavy civil builders, you know, something about the earth moving. Primary materials, you know, you use a lot of uh, filters, valves, pumps. Once again, this is very similar to heavy civil and industrial projects. So as a, a person, as a professional in this area, you have to be able to deal with governmental and regulatory agencies such as EPA and CDC. You have to be familiar with laws about the public health and environment and be able to collaborate with uh, all the scientists and engineers. Okay, that's a quick overview of how the industry look like. So let's take a 15 minute break. And after we return, I will talk about the problems we are facing today. All right. 